Excellent. Hey, th thanks everyone for coming today. Uh, we have a great panel today about music, dance, culture in the metaverse. Uh, my name is Winston King. I, I'm a co-founder of Epic. We basically work with 300 plus video games and a thousand different IPs. And our job is really to match make them and do cool collaborations. We've done a lot of virtual concerts since 2018. Um, put celebrity chefs into cooking games, uh, Willie Nelson into a slot game, uh, basically esports, everything you can think of uh, in these collaborations. And we basically do it to sell virtual goods and license digital items. And of course, back in 2018, we were trying to get these game companies to put these digital items on the blockchain. But of course, it was 2018, 19, no one cared about that but now they know it was as NFTs. So we're here today with a very cool panel. These are some of our clients that we work with. We, we have Jaqual Knight, celebrity choreographer, uh, probably most famous for doing the single ladies Beyonce dance moves, but I'll let him introduce himself after. Um, uh, Matt Everett from s executive producer of World of Dance and David Cohen from Electric Field, manager of 24K Golden, Post Malone. Um, but Jukwal, why don't you start off about introducing yourself and what, what you do? Hello, hello. I'm Jaquel Knight, choreographer, director, creative director, a lover of music, a lover of dance, a lover of all new things. Um, yeah, I've choreographed for some of your favorite artists. Beyonce, everything Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B, Jay-Z, Puff, Big Sean, um, J-Lo, Shakira, um, the list goes on, you know? So I've created many of these viral moments that we've seen in the dance culture music space, everything from the lemon dance to the single ladies dance, everything right now with the body dance and Adele song that's going around TikTok. Um, it's all of my work. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, Matthew, World of Dance. Uh, yeah, I'm Matt Everett. Uh, I am uh, the executive producer of World of Dance, the television show on NBC, uh, and have been uh, one of the uh, owners and officers for the World of Dance organization. Going back several years before there was a television show, which I look forward to talking about, and. I uh, started working with Winston and Epic uh, when we approached a game to put the World of Dance brand inside of the game and create digital merchandise, uh, virtual goods, and it's been a pretty exciting journey uh, for us and really excited to be alongside uh, these guys who are doing amazing things, uh, not only uh, that have a business aspect to it, but also are really helping artists. Um, and the community of artists uh, find uh, new opportunities to advance and accelerate a career that has often been a struggle. So excited to be here. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, David? Yeah, David Cohen. I'm the director of the venture arm of Electric Feel. Uh, we're a really notable entertainment company, management, publishing. CEO and founders right over there, Austin. Uh, so, you know, a lot of the most notable artists and songwriters in the game are managed by us. And, you know, we've leveraged that to build a, you know, impressive portfolio in the early stage consumer space. And then more recently in the blockchain space, including working with Epic. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, so this panel talk will be basically you know, like opportunities in the metaverse. We, we, like I said, we've been doing virtual concerts since 2018. We, we put in Corn and Alice in Chains into a RPG game, which at the time what didn't make crazy sense, but it was a fun project that kind of worked perfectly. And it gave us a kind of a, a, a proof of concept, if you will, for how these virtual concerts can, can look. Like we, we really see these virtual concerts as like a, play, like, like a playable music video. Right, where you can interact with the artists in some way, like like in like if we're look, talking about Travis Scott and Forna, you can chase them around and fly and look at them to different. So it's a, I think a big opportunity for artists to have a different medium. Um, so I want to kind of put out to you guys and what you guys think the opportunities are that you see for the metaverse. And we'll start with we'll start with uh, yourself, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the metaverse has unlocked a completely new wave of, you know, artist fan interaction and engagement. 
it, it's given artists the ability to, in real time, connect with their fans all over the world and interact with them in a way that just isn't even possible at live events. Um, so it, it really is opening a whole nother dimension to artist fan interaction and relationship building and you know the stronger that relationship is built and the more opportunities fans have to engage with and see their favorite artists and step into their world and understand not just their music but other things that interest them in that world um, it, you know the opportunities for different revenue streams and then just more importantly building that fan talent you know relationship is is priceless so I think the metaverse is gonna unlock a whole new wave of artist fan interaction that you know people kind of only dreamed of back in the day. Very good, very interesting. And yeah, I guess and from da a dance standpoint, it's even just as interesting. Uh, we're, we're seeing Mark Zuckerberg do these commercials about basically him in the metaverse with with fitness, and so you know that it makes sense. He wants kids to not just be glued to their their you know screens, but do something active. And if you can you know, encourage exercise even even better. So it, an obvious kind of use case would be dance, would be the next kind of phase of that. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts, Matt. Yeah, actually, uh, we've had some conversations about the misuse uh, and abuse of dance in games, um, most notably Fortnite and the dance emotes that they kind of, not kind of, they took from dancers who um, their livelihood depends on their ability uh -huh. uh, to be able to create and distribute their art just as a, a music artist would with music, right? So a quick story, my uh, dad was an artist. Um, growing up, I remember seeing in tiny home, tiny apartment, um, him struggle as an artist to try to be able to make a living doing what he loved. Right, And you have to appreciate the role that art plays in culture to understand and recognize that it is very important that we protect, preserve, promote art because it is a language that helps connect, connect humanity, uh, sometimes for issues that there is no other way to do it uh, than art. And my dad found a way to be able to make a humble living as an artist, and that always stuck with me um, as someone who loved entrepreneurship and viewed entrepreneurs as artists in their own different canvas, right? But uh, they were creating something uh, from their mind and uh, many of the same struggles. Uh, when I first uh, was introduced uh, to Epic and we put a world, created basically an immersive dance experience inside the game, Avic and Life. Have any of you guys played or familiar with Avic and Life? Just out of curiosity. It's mainly played by. They will be. They will user. be. Yeah. It's mainly played by 14-year-old girls to 25. To be fair, not I not see too many of you in this audience. There, yeah. but it, but it does have 10 million users a plus, and so they they and, do some cool and, stuff. And, and, and in the span of 30 days, a massive amount of money was made selling virtual World of Dance branded shirts and hats and other things, um, and it became very eye-opening for me this is a platform that dancers really need to be able to take advantage of um, because distribution of their art needs to widen, it needs uh, to be expanded. And I mean, we've had conversations about how important that is. So, so many conversations. I mean, everything that Winston's doing, Matthew have started, you know, everything I've been doing has been fighting for the rights of choreographers to have their rights, dancers to have their rights to owning their IP in the music space. But what, when we talk metaverse, you're able to do that off the back, you know, which changes the game for how revenue is um, received for the dancers, how money is made for them, you know, and then how they can start to build a name for themselves and, you know, start to brand themselves in a way where they're the art. You know, whereas for so long we've worked 
for artists and artists get the <laughs> get the recognition. You choreograph something for one day and then that piece of art, right, that choreography goes on to live for the next 15 years, every year on a world tour, you know, we're missing out on so much, you know. So what the metaverse allows us to do is create a space where we're all able to have a seat at the table, you know, and reclaim, you know, sort of ownership and rights in a space where, you know, we can kind of live, live life. I also want to give props to you because at the beginning of the pandemic, um, you started a foundation called the Jaquel Knight Foundation. And if you uh, can take a moment to just think about how dancers make money, it's dancing in studios, it's dancing on tours, it's places that are all closed because of the virus and they're unable to make a living, right? And Jaquel started this foundation in order to help be able to keep some dancers off of the streets. And I think it also tells us why it's important for there to be other ways for them to make money beyond just the physical spaces. And that, you know, the metaverse is kind of the, the future. Yeah, and I think to your point, um, being able to kind of, you know, create NFTs or tokenize certain moves and having that before you release a song. If you think about some of the most, you know, impactful viral songs of the last two decades, a lot of them had a dance associated with them, right? And, and this is before TikTok. Now with the advent of TikTok, you know, a dance and a song go hand in hand and they're part of the marketing strategy yeah. and they, you know, they need one another to really get that reach. So I think being able to, like you said, even those in-game dances, if you, you, have to, you should be able to have to buy an NFT to then have your character be able to do a dance yep. in the metaverse. That's, um, yeah, that's a very good point. At Epic, we, we, we look at NFTs as really just a bridge, a bridge between the, the virtual world and the real world. Like, so a, a simple example would be like you, you buy a t-shirt, and that t-shirt, instead of being 40 bucks, is 50 bucks, but you get this NFT. And the, the NFT is, is basically a picture of the t-shirt. But then you get to unlock that t-shirt on your avatar, and that avatar can wear that t-shirt. And so it kind of puts, ties the whole experience together. And we don't necessarily have to, NFTs kind of get a bad rap of like, it's an investment, like if people are trying to flip them. But we actually see it more of having more of utility. If it goes up in value, even, obviously great. But um, I think that, um, yeah, it's, it's really just a, another technological advance to do, help people do things that they've already loved to do. Um, so, but for, for you guys, obviously, when you do mention music and dance, it sounds, it's obviously, it goes hand in hand. How do you kind of see, how do you envision virtual concerts looking, differing from, or can it complement the actual concert? Uh, absolutely, I mean, well, first of all, with a concert, you're constrained by literal physical limitations, and not to mention, you know, costs are much higher, the production costs. You know, if you're not a, a top tier artist, you're not really getting a large budget to, for production, right? So creating that whole world, creating that whole experience, that's something only the top 1% top of artists get to even have. But with the metaverse, what you're able to do is create an artist's world down to the T and have it be accessible by the entire globe in real time. And you know, like, take Golden for example. You know, his most recent album, El Dorado, has an incredible aesthetic. Uh, imagine an El Dorado world where everything, not just Gold, Golden's performing, but you also have all these ancillary things, his favorite games, his favorite brands, his favorite experiences. So when a fan comes into that, they're not just seeing a performance, they're getting to know the talent and see everything that really interests them, that they want to do. And you know that can just create a whole nother wave of, like I said, artist-fan relationship building that's invaluable. Uh I also am just very excited about not having to deal with Live Nation. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, we have to get uh, keep Live Nation out. That's the whole power of the decentralized uh, nature of this, right? Is how do we per make sure that power isn't con controlled by so few uh, organizations or you know power brokers? Yeah, and you, and you hit the, you know, the metaverse is basically these meta experiences, right? You, where the artists can do play games with their fans. Uh, fans can have like virtual VIP kind of areas that they can would never normally be able to do. Um, so we see a lot of obviously a lot of commerce uh, opportunities that would never exist before, and 
you know, we're basically going directly to the artists, the dancers, and, and being be able to create these little communities. Like some people might be into dancing more than rap or rock or whatever the case may be, and they can kind of go to where they want to go. They're not constrained by, you know, the event. But Jaco, what do you think about kind of how you see yourself in the metaverse? I mean, the possibilities are endless, you know? It's such a world, been a lover of music and a lover of dance, you know? Concerts are out of this world in the metaverse. You're able to, like he said, build a world that's completely honest and true to what you want to do. And now dance artists can do their own concerts without having to be behind their own artists. You know, so you're able to create a lane for yourself that's specific to you and the space that's yours. You know, and I think that's really special. You know, um, coming from a background of dance and music and seeing music in video games. Grand Theft Auto used to be my favorite game, and the, the radio station was like the best part of it, right? You know, um, so now being able to combine those worlds and really create atmospheres that speak truly to who you are as an artist and really create something that hasn't been done before, you know, is really um, what blows my mind about it all. I, I'd be interested to know, Jacola, as an artist, how do you expect to be able to connect with an audience in a digital space uh, differently than what you're able to do in a physical space? I mean, the awesome thing about the metaverse is you're able to connect around the globe at real time. You know, there's no, oh, I'm in London, you can't be at the concert. I'm in New York, you can't be at the show. I can do the intensive in Atlanta. No, you can create a time and a place for everyone to be involved, to be there, to be a part of the experience. You able to speak to everyone, everyone able to get the merch. You know, um, I think that's really special and allows us to soar as artists and really to create something really new and fresh. Yeah, and to that point, I think, just thinking about that layer of semi-anonymity or privacy that having an avatar in the metaverse allows you to do. So, you know, some people maybe will be at that concert, but they're kind of embarrassed to really start dancing. They don't got the moves, you know? If you're in your bedroom, you're in your living room, you know, you can just be free. No one's judging your avatar, right? I mean, even think about, I was talking earlier, just straight up dance lessons, right? I'm Realistically, I'm not going to a dance lesson, but I would be down to have a, a dance lesson in the metaverse and practice. Like, how do people learn how to dance now? They, they watch YouTube videos or practice, or they don't care what people think and they'll go to a dance class, right? So it's like, I think just that ability too, giving that freedom to kind of step out of your boundaries of comfort um, is, again, just gonna unlock a whole new wave. And that's a good segue to Matthew and World of Dance. You guys are, are doing dance studios, correct? Maybe tell us a little bit about that. And Yeah, I think uh, for me, choice is important. And you bring up a good example of someone who would choose to take a dance class in the privacy of their own home, but others, and I would say one of the goals of any uh, organization that's promoting dance classes should be to get someone to have a shared experience dancing, whether that's in a studio or just with friends, even in a game where you can have shared experiences. I don't know if that exists yet, but it should exist at some point. Um, you know, so for World of Dance, for us, I, I really believe in physical studios. I think that those are hubs for local communities. They're a home, a safe place for a lot of people who get to make social connections in addition to doing something that it brings joy into their life. Um, but I also really uh, appreciate and uh, believe the role that a digital virtual studio can play in you know, the future of dance. And so it's how do you create something that connects those two worlds in a seamless way, and that's something that we're working on. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, I have an eight-year-old, and he learns better when you play games with it. So obviously the metaverse is a, is a big video game. And so you can gamify these dancing lessons in many ways. Obviously, we're, we're seeing a lot of viral videos when you when you sync the dance, when it's so perfectly synced with the music, people go crazy, right? Like Beat Saber, and it's it's DDR, uh, Dance Dance Revolutions. Anyways, it seems like a, a very good way to enhance the, the teaching. I think to your point too, I mean, thinking about um, gamifying something for your children, there's also the aspect of gamifying learning and having built-in rewards, right? You know, 
back in the day, I'm only 28, but I guess it's back in the day when you think about how the world's changed. Like, you have to do your chores to get your allowance, right? You have to do your homework. With, you know, NFTs in the metaverse, you could gamify all this learning and know exactly when your kid actually does these things. And then you have the built-in rewards already built into, you know, into, on the blockchain. It's, there's just, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, we, we look at it as like, go ahead, Jaquel, did you have a note? Yeah, so for us, we work with 300 plus games and we don't think that the metaverse should be just one looking place. It's a, we partner with different games that, you know, like Avakin that has their own, what they specialize in, like teenage girls. Another game will be like a first person shooting game, all boys. And so these people want that experience. And so when, if we can, you know, basically change the, how the virtual concert looks for, for that per, uh, person or dance or whatever, we can really segment, segment these kind of, these users and, and deliver the, the right message as opposed to, you know, just a blanket kind of thing. Also, I feel like, you know, this is what I love about Epic, your strategy of, you know, being a metaverse of metaverses and being the connective tissue between all these different worlds. Some pe you know, people are always talking like Decentraland, Sandbox, this, that, like, you don't think about it like Italy, Spain, it's, there's a world and every single country or different world has different experiences and you wanna go there for one reason and this one is better for that and that one's better for this. But taking a step back and looking just at the broader space, you know, there's infinite amount of worlds and you know, each one can have their own part in some way. I, yeah. I know that uh, Jaquel was one of, maybe the first uh, choreographer to actually protect, trademark a dance move. Is that, is that correct? Commercial choreographer, yes. And, and I think what's interesting about that is, you know, you have the ability to take a dance move, have it be something that the, the, the rights are owned by the creator, but to be able to take it and put it into not just one metaverse, one game, but all of them potentially in the future. And I think that to me is like the uh, standard that we should be shooting for, for dancers to be able to protect their art and have it seen in all of these games. And to know that um, there is someone that is making sure that the credit is given to them as it should. Yeah, that's the golden ticket, right? You know, it's to create a space where the art is by the artist and the rewards of that art is given back to the artist. You know, um, with everything I've been doing as far as copywriting is copywriting work in the commercial music space and owning the IP of it. Single Ladies is my work. My goal is to put single ladies in the game so everyone in the world can do single ladies on Single Ladies Day, okay? How many of you, know, you knew <laughs> the choreographer that created that dance? Probably no one, but how many of you know the name the of- The dance. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, the name of the music artist, and that's, that's part of the problem, is that there is an artist that has created something that is ubiquitous, a household name, it's everyone is doing it. Millions, hundreds of millions of people. How do we use, the future of technology and you know this digital metaverse to be able to make that possible. I think that that's pretty exciting. Very exciting. I'm just excited. I'm hope we have about five minutes left. I'm hoping Jukal can we can play that song. You could do it, <laughs> but uh, you know you can see what the, the production people can do. But anyways, um, yeah, NFTs. It seems like the perfect tool for artists to continually make money, to get the credit they deserve. How do you, like that for dance, thanks for explaining that. I think that's the easiest use case. For, for music, how do you see um, the music industry changing because of NFTs? Is this gonna be like Spotify or Napster? Is this the next? Um, yeah, I think, I think right now, uh, blockchain is you know, on the precipice of completely breaking the music industry. Uh, we're actually investors in Audius, which is, you know, SoundCloud on the blockchain. So there's, there's, there's two, there's a dual full uh, purpose there. One, you as an artist, you don't actually know how many streams you have. You know what Spotify tells you and what Apple tells you, but you, you have no way of really verifying. Um, so just that transparency will change everything. But then also, you know, record labels used to be an artist's everything, right? Now they've been relegated to just being their streaming partner. And even then, younger artists coming up, 
they're saying, why would I sign away my life and my masters, which are, which if you're an artist, your masters are your asset, that's your retirement, that's your savings. Why would I sign that away to a label that can't really do so much for me? I could break myself on social media if I do it right, and I can just tokenize my music rights and get my fans involved. Then I, instead of you know selling myself to a record label, I have 20,000 people that have a vested interest in my music spreading. So imagine, you know, if you're a fan of an artist, you buy, you, you buy some tokens that represent X percent of equity in, in their masters, you're now able to not just support an artist you love, but literally the more you support them, the more you spread the music, you're financially incentivized. Like those masters could be tremendously valuable, you know, the more streams it gets. So just the model is getting flipped on its head where, you know, the gatekeepers of of, of music rights are disintegrated. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot of these big, these big, you know, Warner Universal, they're trying to go public and cash out because I think they know on the horizon, the 10, 20 year horizon, it's probably game over. Yeah, no, we have about two minutes left. Um, can, you know, as we wrap up here, is there, what, what's, what's the latest with Electric Feel? Anything exciting that you guys want to talk about? Um, well, you know, Post has his album coming out. Uh, in March or January, sometime between January and March, and the tour that we're planning. And then, you know, we just integrated um, MoonPay into his music video. I don't know if you saw, but in the opening of his uh, one right now with The Weeknd, Post is buying a Bored Ape on MoonPay. Um, and if you've been seeing all these different artists um, buying Bored Apes and putting them from Lil Baby, DJ Khaled, Future, Gunna, you know, that was all done by us. Um, we helped facilitate that. So I think. What you're going to see now um, that's exciting vis-a-vis -vis the metaverse and just blockchain in general is artists are, have a better understanding of this world and what it brings than the labels do and, and the, you know, the power brokers. So you know, we're so excited about the, the potential for just integrating blockchain into music and what it's going to do. And you know, we're trying to be on the forefront of that wave. Super cool. Very cool stuff. Uh, Matt, anything from World of Dance that we should expect? When's the next season? Yeah, we're still working on that. We, uh, we did hear that we're going to have a television show in two other countries next year. Unfortunately, I can't share what they are yet. Um, but you know, I, I, I think one thing that I hope isn't lost in this conversation that's about uh, culture, music and dance culture is, it is still art. Uh, artists are still creating for their fans. And technology is a, an amazing opportunity uh, to reach more people in different parts of the world, but we shouldn't forget that at the end of the day, it still needs to be art, and those fans still just need to have the ability to connect with those artists in ways um, that you know they they want to, and that ultimately gives those artists a reason to keep on creating. Jacob, you know, I think this is the future. You know, I've been committing the past, you know eight years of my career, but the past three years of helping support artists, you know, so for me it's about finding new ways that artists can be the stars, you know, creating ways that allow them to make a living easier, you know, how can we make living easier for our artists? Because like Matthew keeps saying, we have to support them, dance is art, music is art as well, and until we, you know, completely respect that, you know, the world will continue to be hard for artists. So for me, I'm out here trying to see how can we create a better space for all art. Amen. Thank, thank you guys. I just want to thank everyone uh, for coming down and doing the panel. It's been very exciting. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to working with all you guys. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, that's... Should I announce uh, that we're doing some stuff together? Or... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. maybe we'll throw it in there, I think. Um, yeah, so we're, you know, we're heavily affiliated with Epic, and we're going to be working with them on creating, you know, an electric field metaverse and a world that, you know, ha our, all of our artists have a different space in and, you know, has portals into different worlds from Sandbox to Decentraland and whatnot. But, you know, finding a hub where our artists can engage with their fans, our producers and songwriters can teach you know, aspiring producers and songwriters and create, you know, a community um, around what we have to offer and, you know, give back, but in a way that, you know, will really help the broader ecosystem and just be a model for what we hope, you know, will lead to a lot of other music management, entertainment companies in general, uh, taking the dive into the metaverse. Yeah, thank you. With that being said, uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Winston, yeah, work quickly. 
Also, just, yeah, thank you uh, for inviting thank us, you. and also thank you to uh, Epic, which has been leading in this space and finding ways for artists to be able to connect and brands to connect to these games in ways uh, that are pretty exciting. So, um, and I believe you guys have some kind of a coin that's uh, out there, and uh, hopefully... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tanwabi, Uniswap, PancakeSwap. Check it out. Thanks, guys. You did all the plugging for us, so I appreciate you. And thanks for everyone for coming. <laughs>